my name is Amanda Sheroff. I'm the school counselor at Jacksonville Country Day School. My name is Shannon Johnson, and I am the science and tech integration specialist at Jacksonville Country Day School. And we are here today to talk with you about how to help our kids. So the purpose of today is to inform parents and guardians about the importance of parental controls and to give you some guidance on how to keep your kids, our students, safe while using the internet. So what is your biggest concern? As you are listening to our talk, go ahead and write down your questions, things you might want help with. And if we don't answer your questions, feel free to email either one of us and we will ha be happy to help you out. So what is JCDS doing to help protect our students? Well, JCDS controls all internet use and apps on iPads and all technology through a program called Meraki. And this is our firewall. It keeps our students safe while they're browsing on their iPads. However, you need to know that as soon as the students step foot off campus, they are no longer protected by Meraki. And this system not only protects our students while using the internet, it also allows our tech team to reach out to all the um, computers and iPads from one place. And since we have to use Meraki, we cannot use other types of restrictions on the iPads. We have tried to use the um, Apple education um, protection restrictions, as well as the restrictions that come on the iPad itself. And both of those proved to be too limiting on what our students were able to research. Um, various government websites, such as the Florida Fish and Wildlife website, um, were blocked while we were trying to do research. So we need you to keep that in mind when your student takes home their iPads. Student JCDS cannot install these other blocking, blocking apps along with Meraki because only one system is allowed. Um, but teachers do monitor the students while they're using technology here at JCDS. Please remember that the iPads are only for educational purposes. We need everyone's help. We need the parents to remind the students that we have these iPads to make learning uh, more exciting for the students and to offer different types of modality and learning um, resources. So please help us out with that. Uh, students do sign a technology code each month to remind them of the rules and they also go through a Child Safety Matters program with Ms. Sheroff. So you may be wondering what can you do as parents to try to help with the school iPads and any technology in general. Monitoring and supervising are very, very important parts. Obviously we can't monitor 110%, so we do want to be able to trust our children, but being able to play games or if you're using um, the, the school iPad and they're doing homework, have it be used in common areas of the house, rooms like family rooms, kitchens, dining rooms. Use them in common areas so that you have the ability to check in on what they might be using and what projects they might be working on. You can also charge your iPads or any technology in common areas of the house. There's no need for parents or children to be taking their iPads to the bedroom. Um, and if we model this for children, then it'll be a household rule that hopefully the children can follow after, um, after what they're seeing in their parent and guardians. It also could be helpful to install parental controls on your home Wi-Fi. You have the ability to change passwords, and if you feel like that's necessary for your family, you can always change the password in your house so then only you have the capability of turning on and off your Wi-Fi. So let's talk a little bit more about that, how you might do that. If you have a QR scanner on your phone or an iPad and you want to scan this um, QR code, it will take you to this Google Doc that uh, we created that has links to various ideas and, and ways of setting up parental controls at home. If you click on this first one, this goes through directions on how to limit the Xfinity Gateway Wi-Fi. You can block certain times of day, you can block various websites, and it doesn't have to be for the whole internet. It can be um, for specific computers or iPads or iPhones. 
Um, we also have some directions on how to set restrictions on iPhones. We also posted directions on how to limit the use of hours on Mac computers. And there are other um, things available. We just want to make sure that parents know that there are these resources out there for you. NetNanny is software that has a monthly fee. It's got very high reviews and can help protect your Wi-Fi, not only from intruders, but help protect your children while they're um, on the internet. Um, Norton Family Premier is another type of software. Down here at the bottom, you'll see links to various websites that can give you more helpful hints about what you can do at home to keep your child safe and things that you might not be aware of. Best parental apps, um, parental control apps for um, iPhones, um, a digital glossary. These are some pretty interesting sites that we came across and we invite you to um, browse through them. So do you think you would be comfortable with letting your child in Times Square by themselves? This is what we want you to think of when you think of letting your child use the internet. Times Square has a lot of great parts of it, but also there are some people or some activities there that aren't appropriate for children. This is just like the internet. And so when you're on the internet, we want you, or when your children are on the internet, we um, would encourage you to play the games that your children are playing. Ask them about Minecraft. See what games they might be playing on their own personal technology. Be aware of the age requirements for the social media sites that they are on. Um, and friend them. If your family is allowing um, uh, children to be on social media, friend them so that you know when they're posting, what they're posting, and who they might be friends with. We encourage you to keep all technology in common areas. So don't let them go to their bedroom to or bonus room to uh, to talk to friends or to use technology. Always have it in the common areas of the house. And then also encourage your family to do screen-free dinners where everybody puts their technology away for five, ten minutes and talk to each other. I came across this and I thought it would be a fun activity to share with families um, how to help your kids be accountable for their screen time. So if your child wants to play a game on his or her own iPad or on the family computer, um, allow them to pick a popsicle stick out of a can or a jar or you can even put it on little pieces of paper. Have them choose an activity, a chore to do around the house and that will hold them accountable to, for their screen time. So for example, as you see, it says clean your room is a 15 minute or 20 minute activity. They have to do the chore in order for them to go on screen time for that long. So just an idea on a way to help your family get some things done around the house while also encouraging our children to become more self-aware of when they're using the computer and for how long. When we look at cyberbullying, unfortunately, it is um, an epidemic that seems to be sweeping the country. One in five children have been cyberbullied, according to the U.S. Department of Justice. A little less than half of all teens ages 13 to 17 have experienced cyberbullying in the last year. That means they've been aware of it, maybe they've been involved in it, maybe they've done the cyberbullying, or maybe someone has cyberbullied them. When we look at who's participating in this, we tend to see girls participating in this more than boys and a way to try to combat this is by having open communication and building empathy with your children. So as you can see here these are the age restrictions for the social media platforms. All of these have you have to be at least 13 years old in order to be on these sites. At the bottom though there's a caveat and it says 18 to 13 a slash 13 with parents permission so if your family or the parents or guardians of a child are giving permission for a child to go on these sites then sometimes they are allowed to go on these sites but we would really caution you to be very careful about allowing your child to go on social media without you having a very heavy hand in what is happening and what they're posting and what they're seeing just like the picture we showed earlier of Times Square about letting your child run loose in Times Square kind of like being on the internet while Facebook has a lot of great websites and great uh, things to offer there are some tools and some people on there that aren't making great choices and we would never want your child to be seeing things that he or she shouldn't see um, at their time and we would like to point out that none of these websites are allowed to be accessed through our iPads that we've issued to the students 
the students are not allowed to use our iPads to visit YouTube or Reddit or Instagram or Facebook or any of these websites. So we really need your help with following up on this when they're away from school. They are blocked at school, but they are not at your home. Thank you. And last, we would like to mention that setting up boundaries early is important and involving your children in setting up those boundaries is also important. And this quote states, part of developing self-control is understanding and believing in a goal. So if your child understands that you aren't trying to punish them, but instead trying to guide them and teach them, um, then creating the boundaries with your child's input so that the rules don't seem arbitrary or unfair is going to make a lot more sense. You could draw up a contract at home like we have here at school and then kids can help understand exactly what is expected of them. This is a video that we did show during our daytime uh, presentation. If you visit this website, you will be taken to um, the Today Show and they are presenting, excuse me, three different parental control apps and they show you how they work and go step by step explaining it. So it might be something that your family's interested in checking out if your students, your children have iPhones. Moving forward, if there's any questions you ever have, Shannon and myself are here to help you, um, to help our kids. We are doing everything in our power to protect kids here at school, but we would love your support in keeping our kids safe outside of school as well. And that means technology as well as their own personal safety. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to email Shannon or I. It's just the first letter of our first name and our last name. So I'm A. Sheroff at jcds.com. And I'm S. Johnson at jcds.com. We thank you so much for participating. Again, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to let us know. Hope you have a great day. Thank you.